good afternoon all of you so today we are going to take up uh, two important chapters in the financial management one is the capital budgeting and the other one will be the capital structure so before we start uh, the concept of capital budgeting as we all know in any organization budget play a very significant factor in deciding what will be the cost we are going to incur what will be the revenue okay so budget is actually prepared to monitor and track the cost incurred by the organization to see whether they are well within the budget the budgets are there to control and monitor the cost so where there are various types of budgets there one is the fixed nature of budgets and there is a variable nature of budgets we track down all type of expenses which are incurred by the organization through a budgetary process so similarly one of the most important aspect of budgeting is the capital budgeting capital budgeting means the cost which the company is going to incur for purchase of fixed assets so any cost incur for procurement of fixed assets the budget which we are going to make for procurement of the fixed assets is known as capital budgeting so these capital budgeting are actually they are prepared on a long term basis capital refers to the total investment of a company of the firm in the money tangible and intangible assets so the capital is the total investment which a company does in both tangible and intangible assets tangibles are which you can see and which you can perceive like land and building plant and machinery equipment computers laptop they are all of capital tangible in nature intangible the assets like goodwill the reputation of the firm the goodwill which is appear in the balance sheet they are intangible assets so it refers to the total investment made by a company is known as a capital and budgets are a blueprint of plan and action expressed in quantities and manners budgets budgets are prepared for the cost which we are going to incur for procuring those fixed assets for procuring those capital assets so that's why a budget is prepared to see how much cost and how much expenses we are going to incur for procurement of the fixed assets in the organization that is known as capital budget capital budget is a long term planning for making and financing proposed capital outlay it involves a long term plan you are going to procure fixed assets not for 6 month or 5 month you are not going to procure equipment and machinery just for 6 month or 1 year it involves a long term planning it involves the the revenue which you are going to expect from those investment in the long term assets is known as a concept of capital budgeting so capital is a long term planning for making and financing proposed capital outlay you have a certain plan to invest in equipments and plant and machinery so this involves a lot of planning and actions so those long term planning in investing the fixed assets is known as the capital budgeting so capital budgeting consists in planning development of available capital for the purpose for the purpose of maximizing long term profitability of the concern the whole concept of investing in land and uh, building or in fixed assets on plant and equipment is to earn the profitability for the organization capital is a total investment of the company and budgeting is the art of building the budgets so it's a very beautiful statement it is a total investment of the company in acquiring those fixed assets and budgeting is the art of building the budgets budgets means to track and monitor the cost which we have incurred in acquiring those fixed assets examples of capital expenditure what are those capital expenditures purchase of fixed assets such as land and building plant machinery goodwill etc the expenditure relating to addition expansion improvement and alteration to the fixed assets if you are going for a major expenses on your existing assets which will increase the life of the assets which will increase the potential for earning of your organization that will be also will capitalize you have purchased the equipment today after four year you thought that you are going to go for a overhaul or for the expansion of that particular equipment 
so that those expenses those cost which are incurred in overhauling or it is in increase the life of the asset which will increase your potential revenue for the future period those also expenses associated for the expansion is needs to be capitalized the replacement of fixed assets the old assets which which is redundant which is of no use it is not increasing your uh, the profitability so those assets you are selling it off and you are going for replacement so those type of decisions are being considered as a capital expenditure research and development projects you are doing lot of research a lot of companies are totally involved a separate departments are there for research and development what they do they evaluate the pr product mix of the product they evaluate how the product is going to feature in the market so all the expenses involved in this research and development are forming part of this capital expenditure and for all this expenditure a company prepares a budget which is known as capital budget this capital budget these highlights they take care of all these expenses why did budgets are prepared to track and monitor the cost incurred for acquiring these assets features of capital budgeting capital budgeting is a tool for maximizing company's future profit since most companies are able to manage only a limited number of large product at any point of time any organizations it is one of the critical decision the organization has to take on the capital budgeting because funds are limited you have to incur huge cost for acquiring those machineries those equipments which will add value to your organization by improving the profitability because you are going to produce the goods from those equipments so these goods once they are sold in the market you are going to earn the sales and you earn the revenue you are going to earn the profit out of it so they are only a limited number of large project at a time then is at a, at a one time you cannot have number of equipments in the organization because it involves a huge capital outlay it involves a huge capital expenditure so company has to plan out in such a way they have to take out the maximum out of the finance or the capital which has invested in acquiring those assets so that they can be put to use and they can take the profit in the long run it involves high risk because this is a capital expenditure once committed you are not going to take it back once you have decided you are going to invest 1 crores of rupee in buying this equipment once this equipment has brought it is a sunk cost you are not going to get a penny out of it unless you are going to make the use of the equipment by producing the product or the goods and it will be sold in the market from that equipment which you have purchased which you have planned in your capital budgeting exercise that's why it involves a huge risk because it's a huge capital is involved in acquiring those assets large profits are estimated because you are your purchasing decision of any capital equipment depends upon how profitable will be this investment how you are going to reap the profit out of this equipment how you are going to generate revenue unless we are decide this you are not able, the capital budget decision cannot take place so one of the most key consideration for any capital budgeting decision is the estimation of profit which you are going to derive from buying this equipment for your plant long time period between initial investment and the estimated return because once you have invested in the equipment it is going to take a long time because you are going to produce the goods you are going to sell in the market you have to first install the equipment you have to understand the technical feasibility of the equipment so this it takes a lot of time so that's a long period time between initial invest investment you have to approach the bank for the loan you have to issue the shares debentures you have to obtain the capital once the capital is received then you will decide on the type of equipment which you are going to buy you are going to explore the market you you should suit your requirement the equipment which you are looking out should suit your requirement so it is going to take time till and the estimated return because once the goods when the when the equipment comes into your premises you are going to produce the goods you are going to sell it is going to long time effort so that's why it take a long time period between the initial investment and the estimated returns need an importance of capital budgeting why we need capital budgeting why there is a need huge investment capital budgeting the cb is a capital budgeting capital budgeting involves huge expenditure and hence require control to manage its expenditure that's why a budgeting exercise is needed we need to budget this capital 
cost since it is going to involve a huge capital outlay you are going to incur a huge investment for buying those equipments for your company so it involves a huge competition uh, expenditure and require control to manage this expenditure you need to very closely control this expenditure because you have to see at each stage what are the cost has been incurred in acquiring those equipment and you have to track and monitor those expenses long term cost capital budgeting is a long term in nature or permanent in nature financial risk involved in investment decisions are more the capital budget is a long term in nature that as i already told you you are not going to procure the equipment for just a 6 month or a 1 year you are going to procure for the this equipment for a long period of time so that you can reap the benefit out of investing in this equipment so that's why it is called a very long term and the financial risk are very high you have procured a particular equipment which your research and development department has uh, has uh, suggested for producing this particular good if this particular goods which research and development department and the has suggested and accordingly you have procured the material equipment and if your equipment produces the goods which is suggested by r&d and it is not marketable then the whole cost will be going down the drain your product should be able to fetch value from the market the product should be able to get the returns from the market for which you have to procure the equipment and this equipment if this has been procured and the goods which have been produced by this equipment where you have invested lakhs and crores of rupees if the returns of if the goods produced out of these equipments are not able to sold in the market then the whole investment will go down the drain that's why it involves a financial risk irreversible once committed cannot be changed back once the decision has been taken to procure this material and already you have entered into agreement with the bank for borrowing the money to procure those equipment because you have entered into already into agreement with the bank to to take 1 crore loan from the bank to finance this equipment but once the 1 crore loan has been taken if you are not able to procure the equipment for which the loan was intended then it is of no use so that's why it is called irreversible long term effect increase the revenue in the long term and will bring significant changes in the profit of the company the whole capital budgeting exercise aims at enhancing the revenue for the organization enhancing the profit of the organization why we are going to invest in the cap fixed asset we are investing in fixed asset so that the fixed asset will fetch a particular trend of revenue or it will fetch a huge amount of profit for us that's why we are investing in this those equipments and the machinery otherwise it is of no use therefore before making the investment it is required careful planning and analysis of the project thoroughly the whole project of acquiring the fixed capital equipment need to be done thoroughly by the budgeting department in every company there is a mis and budgeting department the whole purpose of this budgeting department is to see how this investment how the fund is to be channelized for procurement of this equipment and how it can be best put to use for the benefit of the organization features of capital budgeting benefits for the future capital is invested with a view to gain benefits for the future huge fund generally capital budgeting involves la huge amount of funds irreversible decision decision one second cannot be changed if we have already started work on our decision if you have already started the work if you have already started the paperwork for procuring the loan from the bank you have already received the fund because you have already entered into agreement with the bank that you are committed that's why bank has given you 1 crore amount to you so that you can procure this asset so the bank personnel will come and inspect your premises whether you have your, your fund has been properly been utilized for which it was intended investment of fund capital budgeting is mainly related with the investment of capital for the long term profit again it, it is being told the whole objective of capital budgeting exercise is to bring profit for the organization is to bring revenue for the organization that's why you are buying equipment new machinery new uh, equipment in the organization non flexible activity funds are invested for the non flexible activity once it is intended that this amount you are going to invest for this particular investment you cannot divert those fund for any other activity because it is already committed 
you have taken the one crore loan from the bank to finance your investment in this particular assets you cannot use that one crore loan for any other purpose that's why it is a non flexible it is a fixed decision it is a one time decision you have invested you have decided you are going to buy that means you are going to buy you cannot divert those investment to any other place decision for long term in capital budget decisions are taken for long term profit long term commitments of fund capital budgeting process this is one of the important area in the capital budgeting how the capital budgeting starts how the company decides where to invest what are the decision criteria which facilitates the management to decide on the capital budgeting decision what are those determinants identification of various investment proposal here the company evaluate the all the feasibility studies in the market how what is what, where the equipments are available who are the suppliers whether the equipment will match the expectation of revenue which is going to generate from the market what will be the depreciation of this particular equipment how where we are going to finance it what is the technical feasibility of this equipment how many competitors are available to supply the required equipment for us what when the production is going to start so various identify investment proposal various department analyze the various investment decision finance department will talk out all the financial options technical department will work out the technical aspect of the project the production department will evaluate how much quantity will be produced for this particular equipment sales will decide how much revenue you are going to generate from the investment which you are going to make for this particular equipment so various departments are involved in analyzing this proposal because this proposal is a non flexible you cannot change it once you made up your mind to acquire this asset lot of work has been done you cannot change it so in the capital budgeting this in the decisions lot of department are involved and they work in tandem in coordination to see all the parameters and all the feasibility studies has been carried out deeply deeply before making any capital investment decision various department analyze the various investment decision and will select proposal submitted to the planning committee of the competent authority generally what happened in a capital investment decision generally lot of companies they are having a purchase committee or a capex committee they call it as a capital expenditure the capex committee in the capex committee you have a head of the department from all the functions from finance from purchase from technical from sales from production so all these people they coordinate and work out the investment proposal how effectively it is this particular equipment which the company is going to buy will serve the purpose matching the proposal planning committee or the capex committee as i told you will analyze the various proposals and screening what happens they float the bid or they invite quotations from the various suppliers the supplier a will supply this equipment supplier b is also given the quotation supplier c is also there supplier d is also there so they will evaluate and they will screen all this proposal to see who is the best in terms of price in terms of delivery in terms of performance in terms of after sale service so they will evaluate from all angle so they will prepare a comparative rate chart a comparative analysis supplier a supplier b supplier c supplier d of the equipment which i am looking out so once this comparative analysis are screened by this capex committee or this planning committee to see where to place the order who is the best supplier in terms of price in terms of performance in terms of quality everything evaluation proposals are evaluated with the help of various methods such as payback period net discovered present value method accounting rate of return and risk analysis there are various techniques of knowing or various methods of knowing the returns this particular equipment is going to give me in the capital budgeting exercise the various methods are used to evaluate the returns this particular equipment is going to give me 
in terms of profitability in terms of cash inflow how much cash inflow this particular equipment is going to give me is being evaluated by this following method there are payback period where when this particular equipment is going to give me the return in how many days today i have invested 1 crore rupees when this 1 crore rupees i am going to get return so this return or this cash inflow when i am going to receive and how much in how much time period it is going to take place will be decided by all this method i have invested 1 crore rupee during how much time in 5 years down the line or 10 years down the line i am going to take this payback when i am going to get this 1 crore back because i have invested i have taken the loan from the bank so what is the payback period during how much time i am going to get the return from this equipment so all these methods are evaluated in this evaluation proposal fixing the property the planning committee approves the final proposal once the vendor are decided once we have evaluated the vendors we have decided on the performance of the equipment how is going to perform in the long period once we have identified the present rate of return the returns this equipment is going to give me we are finally narrowing it down to yes this property i am going to buy from this particular vendor at this price this equipment is going to give me this return in 5 years or 10 years or 15 years so once it is being evaluated we have fixed up the property so the planning committee approves the final proposal with the help of following profitability economic constituent and financial viability market condition that means profitability i have decided when this particular equipment is going to give me the returns economic constituent what will be the cost involved from where i am going to source the capital from where i am going to source the fund for financing this investment financial viability whom to procure either to approach the bank or i will issue shares or i will issue debentures market condition what is the market condition is it a right time to buy this equipment or shall we wait for another 6 month or one year considering the market scenario so once this whole factor has been evaluated we have fixed up the particular property yes this we are going to buy it. implementing it helps the management for monitoring and containing the implementation of the proposal use of part and cpm part is program evaluation and review technique and cpm is a critical path measure here what we do we track the project yes today this particular we have put forward this proposal to the supplier in the month of january in the month of march we are going to receive this material in the month of april we are going to provide training to all the staff who is going to operate on that machine in the month of may the commercial production is going to start in the month of june we are going to sell this product in the market in the month of august we are going to receive the revenue so the whole aspect of the project when this metal is going to come what is the delivery schedule when it is going to install when it is going to start commercial production all this thing is captured in program evaluation and review technique these two are the tools for monitoring the project timeline these are the tools to to monitor the project timeline how and when where we are going to have this equipment into place so it will track down each and every activity from the date of finalizing the proposal to the start of the commercial production from that equipment it will track down everything performance performance review and feedback actual results compared with the standard vision so once the equipment has been finalized installed operated then we have to analyze the cost of the total investment against the budget which we have fixed for that particular investment suppose we have fixed a budget of 1 crore for that equipment on actual we came to know we have incurred 1 lakh 20000 so 20000 is a negative varan 20000 we have exceeded the budget so there was a the cost overrun you have exceeded more cost than the budget so <clears throat> the capital budgeting decision 
the crux of the capital budgeting is profit maximization as I repeatedly i have been telling the whole object of acquiring the fixed assets is to earn revenue and is to earn the profit for the organization that's why you are investing in the new equipment and machinery there are two ways either to increase the revenue or reduce the cost the whole ab object of capital budgeting is to either to reduce the cost of production or to increase the revenue that is the two most critical objectives for any organization who is going for capital investment decision either you increase the profit for the organization or this capital budgeting would help you to reduce the cost no other way only these two objectives the increase in revenue can be achieved by expansion of operation you have purchased new equipment you have expanded your capacity you are selling you are producing more goods you are selling more goods and as a result you are increasing your revenue as a increase of revenue you are increase the profit by adding a new product line reducing cost means representing obsolete return on the asset reducing cost means you 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 have you have installed the equipment which will help you to reduce the cost because it will produce more goods in a shorter period of time so your variable cost will go on decreasing your fixed cost will decrease if you go on producing more goods so reducing cost either you should reduce the cost for the equipment which you have procured or you should fetch more revenue for you accept reject decision if proposal is accepted the firm invest in it and if rejected the firm does not invest so once the proposal is accepted you are going ahead for investing now if it is not you are rejecting immediately then and there generally proposals that yield a rate of return greater than the certain required rate of return or cost of capital accepted and others are rejected so the cost of capital suppose you are taken a loan from the bank 1 crore and you are paying a interest at the rate of 10% to the bank your return should be more than 10% that is the object of having a good capital budgeting decision if your return is 5% from the goods which you have already invested and you are paying interest to the bank at the rate of 10% it is not a good option it is not a good capital budgeting decision your payback period your cash inflow should always be higher than the cost of capital cost of capital means the interest which you are going to pay to the bank for the borrowed fund so revenue should be more than the cost of funding this investment proposal that's why generally proposals that are yield a higher rate of return your profitable percentage your net income from selling the goods from the market for the capital which you already invested for that equipment your revenue profitability should be always be more your net income should be always be more than the cost of capital mutually exclusive project decision mutually exclusive project compete with other project in such a way that the acceptance of one will exclude the acceptance of other only one may be chosen yeah mutually exclusive exclusive means you are having two project at the same time where your decision has to be taken only for one you cannot go for two because it involves a huge capital outlay there cannot be you cannot have two investments for the same objective which you have lined up either you have to go for one only that's why it is called a mutually exclusive you cannot have two equipment because of the huge capital outlay either you are going to have this or you are going to be going to have this capital rationing decision capital rationing refers to a situation where the firm has more acceptable investment requiring a greater amount of finance that is available with the firm ranking of the investment is employed on the basis of some predetermined criteria such as rate of return capital rationing what is capital rationing capital rationing is the limitation of the fund which you have you are not having a very abundant amount of money where you can invest and you are not going to expect any rate of return from that equipment so with that limited amount of fund which you are having either through own source either from your own profit or retained earning or through the banks or through shares or preference shares either because 
you have to chalk out a plan in such a way so that with the limited of fund you have to take the maximum return you you suppose you are not having any fund with you you are approaching a bank for a loan of 10 lakhs rupees with 10% interest so with that limited fund are you going to invest this in a dead investment no you are you are certainly not going to go for any dead investment you are going to invest that fund in a very profitable way which will fetch revenue for you in the long run that is the object why which capital investment decision has been taken that's why it is very important to go for a capital rationing capital rationing means with a limited amount of fund which you have you are going to expect a maximum return the fund whatever you have is going to invest to derive a maximum profit out of your investment so the first is situation where the firm has more acceptable investment requiring a greater amount of fund than is available with the firm ranking of the investment for the employee on the basis of some predetermined criteria such as rate of return so only the rate of return is one of the most important criteria of any capital investment decision you should able to generate more profit you should able to generate a more revenue out of your investment and those rate of return should always be greater than your cost of capital cost of capital means the you have taken the loan from the bank which which for which you are paying the interest you have issued the preference share where the profit you have to distribute them as a form of dividend either to the equity shareholders or preference shareholders so your always objective the whole objective of this capital investment decision is to derive maximum revenue out of your investment so this is taxation and budgeting this is also one of the most important how the tax is going to have effect on the your budgeting exercise the income tax usually has a significant effect on the cash flow of a company <clears throat> and should be taken into account while making capital budgeting decision why income tax is important in case of budgeting because you are calculating your return on investment based on your cash flow cash inflow based on your net income based on the revenue which you are going to receive and since this income or the revenue which you are going to receive it is going to be taxed because it is a revenue so in any capital investment decision your return after tax is the criteria for any investment decision it may be possible that you have calculated a particular cash inflow or return from this investment but after computing the tax you find the whole proposal of investing is not suitable because of this tax criteria so any revenue any income which you are going to generate from the capital investment decision is going to have impact on the tax tax is going to have a uh, going to have a implication on your revenue that's why all the cash inflow calculation revenue net income is considered as after tax then the proposals are evaluated once the revenues have been derived after tax then you know where you stand whether you are earning a profit out of it or you are incurring a loss so any capital decision if it is not tax is not considered in your competition the whole capital decision may go wrong you may end up in incurring loss for the capital investment which you have already done if you are not considering the tax element in your calculation so it has a significant effect on the cash flow of a company and should take into account while making capital budgeting decision any investment that looks desirable without considering income tax may become unacceptable after considering income tax that is the way i am telling you an investment looks desirable without considering income tax may become unacceptable after considering the income tax so the income tax is going to have a very strong influence on your capital budgeting decision if you have not considered income tax your whole decision of going for this investment in capital uh, capex project is will go down the drain it will not serve the purpose before explaining the income tax on capital budgeting 
using a net present value example we need to understand three concepts so when we are when we try to evaluate any capex proposal we have to consider the three most important element of tax which we are going to discuss in the brief for any investment decision in the capital item or a capex item or a fixed asset item the three tax evaluation the three elements of tax we need to evaluate for any capital investment decision what are those these are after tax benefit there is a one element is there we are going to study with this with example after tax benefit after tax cost and depreciation tax yield a brief explanation of each is given so let us understand what is after tax benefit as we all know that a company prepares a profit or loss account for the period to see the profitability of the organization to see whether the organization is running on loss or it is running on profit so this profitability statement or it, generally we call it as a profit and loss account all the organization they prepare this profit and loss account which is a financial statement so from this financial statement what does it show it shows whether the company is incurring profit or loss correct similarly for any this investment for any decision for capital investment we have to consider these cash flow or the net income to see how we are going to have a tax implication on this net income so after tax revenue we have to calculate whatever the revenue you have earned for the period is need to be taxed at the rate like 30% whatever 40% whatever the statute has defined for the particular profit so we have to reduce the tax amount to arrive at a profit after tax so taxable revenue or cash inflow when reduced by the income tax are known as after tax benefit or after tax cash inflow whenever you have reduced the tax element from the cash inflow or the cash or, or, or from the revenue it is known as after tax revenue or benefit or after tax cash inflow when the income tax is considered in capital budgeting decision after tax inflow is used not before tax for any capital investment decision whatever the revenue you have projected which you are going to earn for a long period of time from the equipment all the revenues are considered as after tax only suppose xyz company generated 10000 cash from its operation so it is a cash inflow 10000 is a cash inflow it has generated from its operation the tax rate of the company is 30% so 10000 30% is 3000 rupees is a tax so after revenue will be 10000 minus 3000 so net revenue after tax will be 7000 so compute after tax cash so after tax benefit or after tax cash inflow will be this is a formula 1 minus tax rate that is 1 minus 0.3 you multiply it by taxable cash receipt that is 10000 it will come 7000 so from 10000 you have computed a tax of 30% that is 3000 the net is the after tax that is a 7000 rupees that is called as an after tax benefit or after tax cash inflow now what is after tax cost there are some cost which we have incurred where we get the we result in a saving out of the tax for example tax deductible cost reduce taxable income and health saving income tax suppose the there are few expenses which are allowable by the income tax if you study the income tax it is written over there they have identified the list of expenses which were admissible for computation of your net profit so some expenses they will consider as yes in course of the business you have incurred so they will allow that as a result they are allowing as a deduction from your total income those expenses you are incurring the income tax and as a result for example you are having a revenue of 1 lakh rupees if you have not incurred any expenses is this entire 1 lakh rupees will be become a profit 
So in this one lakh rupees, you are charging thirty percent tax. So thirty thousand you have paid on your entire revenue because you have not incurred any expenses. So entire thirty thousand is a tax for you. Another company, same revenue one lakh, they have incurred fifty thousand towards purchase of raw material, twenty thousand towards payment of salaries and wages. So these fifty thousand for raw material. And thirty thousand, eighty thousand, it is a admissible expenses because they are incurred in your normal course of the business. So one lakh revenue minus this eighty thousand, so net income will be at twenty thousand. So you have saved the tax because they have allowed you to in these two expenses to be reduced from their income. So in twenty thousand, you have been paying thirty percent, six thousand only tax you are paying. So fourteen thousand will be your Net revenue. That's why it is written tax deductible cost. These raw material expenses, these salaries and wages we have paid, which we have reduced from the total income, is known as tax deductible cost because the the government, the the authority has given us the benefit of reducing these expenses from the income to arrive at a net income. On that net income, it will be charged as a taxable. Tax amount, so tax deductible cost reduce taxable income and help save income tax. A cost net of its tax effect is known as after tax cost. A company want to start training program that will cost fifty thousand rupees. So the training program is a tax deductible cost for the company. Compute after tax cost of training program if the tax rate is seventy percent, thirty percent. So thirty percent of fifty thousand, you have able to. Save the tax. Thirty thousand of fifty thousand is taxable is fifteen thousand rupees. So fifteen thousand you reduce from this fifty thousand is come thirty five thousand. So after tax cost is thirty five thousand because fifteen thousand thirty thousand is thirty percent is that tax element which you are reducing from the cost. So you have saved. You have saved fifteen thousand. That will be the after tax cost. That is thirty five thousand. Similarly, <coughs> depreciation tax shield is depreciation is a non cash item. So for income tax purpose, depreciation cost is not considered as an admissible expenses. Hence, the tax benefit will be your income for you. For example, depreciation is a non-cash deductible expenses that saves income tax by reducing taxable income. The amount of tax that is saved by depreciation is known as depreciation tax shield. The annual tax deductible depreciation of a company is suppose twenty-five thousand, and the tax rate is thirty percent. So, on thirty percent of twenty-five thousand is a tax shield, is a tax saving out of which. The company, the government will not pay you any tax. You don't have to pay any tax on this amount. It is a tax shield given. Complete tax saving from the depreciation. So, state away twenty-five thousand of tax rate because this is an expenses. This is this is a non-cash expenses for which we are getting the benefit. We are getting the tax shield benefit. So, out of twenty-five thousand, thirty percent is a tax shield. So, seven thousand five hundred is a depreciation tax shield given to us. we we'll understand this whole concept with one example so it becomes very clear we can explain the income impact of income tax on capital budgeting with the help of comprehensive example what is this example a company is considering the purchase of equipment to save its cost the relevant data for net present value analysis of equipment is given below determine the net present value of the investment so net present value of the investment Cost of the equipment suppose two lakh forty thousand rupees. Estimated annual cash flow before tax is one lakh rupees. Just make a note. Eh? The estimated annual cash flow before tax is one lakh rupees. Useful life of the equipment is six years. The equipment is going to give us a revenue for six years, and after six years it will be salvaged out. The the life of the machine itself is for six years. Residual value. Once you sold this equipment as a scrap, 
it has a residual value of 30000 you will realize only 30000 after 6 year today you have procured for 240000 after 6 year it has a salvage value of 30000 you will not get more than 30000 rupees tax rate is 40% discount rate is 12% recruitment if it depreciated as using a straight line method so if you see the whole particulars or the whole the details of this particular equipment has been given so we have to compute the tax element and you have to find out the net present value net present value means the value of the equipment today for 6 years what is going to be the value today for 6 years because you have you to calculate the cash flow income for the 6 year considering discounting factor you have to consider the discounting factor that is called a net present value the future return has to be discounted to arrive at a present value because why it is discounted because it is account of inflation because of because of in the, the the currency value diminishes so with the passing of time you cannot have the same value after six years the, the income which you are running today you may not have the income after 10 years down the line so you have to discounting factor has to be used to see what is the present value of the revenue which you are going to earn consistently for 6 years so equipment cost cash flow is it is a outflow that's why it is a negative 2 lakh 40000 is a negative because it's a equipment cost annual cash cash saving is 1 lakh rupees annual cash saving it is 1 lakh rupees depreciation 40000 how it has calculated your life of the your, your capital cost is 2 lakh 40000 rupees and the life is going to have only 6 years so 6 you divided by 2 lakh 40000 is 40000 so you have to provide a depreciation of 40000 for the 6 year consistently and you have a residual value of 30000 which you are going to receive after 6 year because it is going to going to have a salvage value after 6 years you are not going to use this material so we are very clear cash in cash flow before tax is 2 lakh 40000 which is outflow inflow is positive because 1 lakh you are going to receive depreciation is a positive because it is a tax shield you are going to get the benefit of tax of this of this depreciation being a non cash item and this 30000 why it is a positive because you are going to earn this amount after 6 year as a scrap value or as a <coughs> salvage value and now what is the tax effect 2 lakh 40000 no tax because it is neither any it is not a revenue for you so there is no tax it is expenses there is no tax on the expenses so this 2 lakh 40000 there is no tax effect on this annual cash saving cash saving is how much you are you are going to earn 1 lakh rupees so after reducing reducing the tax of 40% you are having a tax you are saving of 0.6 your net income will be on the basis of 0.6 correct similarly depreciation depreciation is 40000 you are going to save tax of 40% on it because this is a non cash expenses no tax will be levied on that so the entire 40% of 40000 will be your saving again residual income is a revenue for you it is a cash inflow for you so 30000 you have to reduce 40% so net will be 0.6 that is 60% will be your revenue so let us multiply this after multiplying we came to know that equipment will be 2 lakh 40000 cash inflow after reducing the tax that is the after tax revenue or after tax cash inflow will be 60000 this is the after tax cash inflow you have reduced 40% tax you are multiplying only by 60% which will be your net revenue after tax that's why it is called after tax inflow similarly depreciation shield is a 40000 is a cash inflow and you are going to save the tax of 40% it is a non cash expenses it is not a revenue so the entire 40% of 40000 will be your tax shield 
which will be like a revenue for you it is a saving for you so residual value is 30000 on which you are taxing 60% which coming to 18000 and the period we are going to have zero years annual cash we are going to receive for the 6 years depreciation again for the 6 years and residual value why only 6 because you are going to this revenue only on the 6 period so this is zero because you are going to get the revenue for the next 6 year you have invested so today is it zero you are going to get the revenue for the next 6 year annual cash inflow 1 to 6 year 1 2 3 4 5 6 4 for the consistently for the 6 years you are going to receive the revenue similarly depreciation consistently for the 6 year every year you will have a tax shield benefit on this depreciation and only on 6th year you will have a residual value for that particular equipment that is 30000 so you multiply this year with this cash flow tax with the present value factor present value factor as i told you the discounting factor which was applied the revenue which you are going to have the present value for the income which you are going to incur for 6 year it is so it show you the present value of that income discounting factor that's why it is discounted to show the present value of your revenue so you there is a present value chart is available from the present value chart you take the figure and you multiply this figure you will have the present value of the cash flow so the present value of the cash flow after discounting is 81562 so 81562 you will receive every year after considering the discount factor so this is what the tax implications of the capital budgeting you have to consider the net flow after tax for any capital budgeting decision otherwise the pro- proposal may not be at all acceptable to the organization so the every organization every company any firm or unit they always consider the after tax revenue for their competition or for their any capital budgeting decision so this is an excellent example see how the effect of tax has been calculated or in inflow outflow depreciation seal and the salvage value to arrive at a present value of the cash inflow so every year we are going to have considering the discount factor considering the net present value if we have come across 81562 so multinational companies and capital budgeting what multinational has a relevance with the capital budgeting exercise today with lot of cross border transactions today with lot of fdis with today with lot of capital investment proposals across various countries we are today we are not only investing locally we are doing a capital investment decision abroad in our country also and in other country also they are investing heavily on us lot of equipments we are procuring imported lot of equipments we are exporting also so it involves a huge amount of capital expenditure because of various factors although the original decisions to undertake an investment in a particular foreign country may be the outcome of combination of strategic behavioral economic consideration choice of specific project call for evaluation of economic feasibility this is the most complex this is the most complex decisions the company takes when they go for capital investment decision in a foreign country there are so many complications are involved so much of feasibility studies so much of tax angle lot of uh, government regulations lot of duty regulations so much of complicated parameters are to be considered while investing any capital investment decisions in a foreign country for this purpose capital budgeting exercise has to be done a very thorough a very structured and a very scientific way a capital budgeting exercise has to be done before you go for any investment in a foreign land because of various complicated factors your tax your other economic consideration other other different countries have different regulations uh, different uh, um, parameters Uh, the social economic technical so all these factors has to be very clearly considered before going for any investment decision in a foreign country hence the most important tool which we which we uses to evaluate uh, the such investment is the capital budgeting capital budgeting technique provides the mechanism 
to identify opportunities and evaluate their economic viability. That is why MNCs evaluate international project by using capital budgeting techniques. A lot of multinational corporations, they use the techniques of capital budgeting like this internal rate of return or net present value or discounted cash flow. So all these techniques they use to evaluate the future profitability of the investment in the foreign land. How the, whether the investment, capital investment decisions in the foreign land is really going to fetch you revenue or not considering the lot of factors that other countries are having. Proper use of capital budget and techniques can help the firm in identifying the international projects worthy of implementation from those that are not. So, a suitable capital budgeting technique should need to be adopted to suit, to see whether the company is running, earning the revenue or the company is uh, the capital investment decisions are helpful in reducing the cost for the organization or not. A very careful technical analysis, technical feasibility studies, economic feasibility, social feasibility has to be carried out with the, for any capital investment proposal in the foreign land. There are a host of factors which are unique to foreign investments that make cross-border investment very complicated. Why the cross-border investments are complicated? Because the basic stakes involved in the evaluation of projects are determine net investment outlay. First, before putting any decisions on investing, first we need to work out what will be the capital outlay. How much fund I am going to invest in this particular equipment at a foreign land. Suppose I am in India, I want to start one business in Sri Lanka. In the Sri Lanka, I want to have a workshop where I am going to procure the material, equipment for producing the material. So, it will involve a huge capital outlay because in the foreign land, you don't know where is the land, how you are going to procure it, what are the government regulations you are going to follow, from where you are going to source this equipment, what will be the labor involved, and a lot of permissions, permits, license you have to take. So, it is going to involve a huge capital outlay. So, the determine the net investment outlay is one of the critical decisions before investing in a foreign land. Estimate net cash flow to be derived from project over time including estimated salvage value. As we have understood in the previous example, the net cash flow is a prime consideration for any capital investment decisions. So, net cash flow after tax, please note, net cash flow after tax we need to compute to arrive at a capital investment decision. And define the appropriate discount rate for determine the present value of the expected cash flow. The cash flow which you are going to expect for six years, arrive it at today's value, the present value to see the effect, what you are going to receive today on the present value. This technique is very much important for any capital investment decision. Apply NPV, internal rate of return, that is the net present value, internal rate return technique to determine the acceptability or priority ranking of the potential project. What will be the internal rate of return? What will be your payback period? What will be a cash inflow? This decision has to be taken before investing in the capital investment. This is a very critical. Unless you identify the payback period for the project, the project will not going to serve any purpose. The above evaluation process becomes complicated because of the factors peculiar to international operation. So let us evaluate what are the complications we involve when you are going for any investment decision or any, any capex decision in a cross-border situation. Some of the factors unique to capital budgeting for MNCs are conversion of cash flow from foreign project into currency of the parent firm. The foreign currency fluctuation is the most complex parameter to be considered. I have procured the equipment to be installed in Sri Lanka. What currency I am going to pay? What will be the fluctuation? The foreign, foreign currency fluctuation is the critical, the most complex in this capital investment. So, conversion of cash flow from foreign project into currency of the parent firm. This is very important. Restriction on full remittance of cash flow from for a foreign project. How much inflow which you have earned for the investment outside your country is going to remit it back to your country? You cannot remit 100% because since you have done the investment in that foreign land, you have to remit some amount of cash flow to that country. 
you cannot extract the whole revenue from that country and bring into your own country that is the rules and conditions which you have to follow before investing in the foreign land so this is most restriction on full remittance you cannot transfer the whole amount which you have earned in sri lanka which you have invested into your own country the some amount that the local government will going to keep because they have allowed you to operate in their own country so of course they will be expecting something from you exchange rate fluctuation that is another aspect now if you are going to have investment in china there is a huge volatility in the exchange rate in the yuan so in the yuan currency you are investing some amount in their land so the lot of foreign currency fluctuation will actually may be a very critical factor in your capital investment decision application of different tax rate in the country of project and in the parent company your tax rate is different in other country the tax rate will be different so all these factor you have to consider involvement of royalty and management fee you have to pay the local people the local management the collaboration we have entered with the partners which are having in the foreign land you have to pay royalty to them you have to pay management fee because they have helped you in setting up the plant in the sri lanka so since they have helped you you have to periodically you have to pay the royalty to them you have to pay the management fee for incurring their expenses amenities and concessions granted by the host company lot of concessions and amenities you have to provide them all these are involves a cost which will form part of your capital budgeting decisions lot of facility you have to provide them you have to hire uh, the, the, the consultant over there to start a new project so the consultant is going to ask for a huge salary or the huge consultancy fees from you so all these factors has to be considered before arriving at a capital investment decision benefits of international diversification to the shareholders of the parent firm so this the people must have in the some foreign investors must have invested invested in the project so you have to provide all this facility shareholders dividends and everything to those uh, partners who have facilitated for investment in your firm in in the foreign country lost exports you are going to loss the exports because already you are going to produce there you are presently in your country you are not going to produce much quantity because you find in that country your profitability is going to be more so you are not going to export that you are going to manufacture but you are going to serve indigenously because already you are set up a plant over there you need need not do export now because there the facility is already there in the foreign land to cater to the local demand so that's why you are going to lose the exports now difficulty in estimating terminal value of the project foreign projects suppose you are going to wind up you want to close that foreign project with huge cost involved in closing the project so all this terminal value we need to consider before you go for a very complex and very very technical this capital investment decision differing rates of national inflation we are having inflation of a 6% they are having 10% so all these factor inflation factor also need to be considered knock on effects of overseas investment project on the operations elsewhere we need to study the whole aspect how many players are there who are going to compete with your product in that market what will be your revenue what will be your uh, net profit how what will be your cash inflow after tax so all these factor we need to consider before you going for investment in the foreign land political risk involving foreign investment that is the biggest risk any political turmoil in the country will spoil the whole capital investment decision you came to know there is a political unrest there is a riot violence happening in this country so you are not able to produce because your factory almost 15 days in a month remains closed so it is not going to serve the purpose so in the political uncertainty situation you are going to incur a loss big loss once you go for a capital investment decision in those country where there is a political turmoil is there so all these factors has to be very critically considered before you go for any investment in the foreign land now let us recap what we have understood in the capital budgeting let us just run through in a 5 minutes what we have captured what we have learned the lesson today in the capital budgeting exercise 
we have understood the basic meaning and the concept of the capital budgeting capital budgeting the whole object of capital budgeting is to have a profit maximization for the organization it is a long term it is irreversible once invested you cannot decide to take it back the whole object of capital budgeting is to track and monitor the investment decision in the fixed assets so examples are mostly they are research and development they are land and building plant and equipment which are going to fetch revenue of for the organization over a long period of time so features it involves the high risk because it involves a huge financial investment decisions with large profits are estimated long period time between initial investment and the estimated return then importance of capital budgeting you know huge investment is involved it is a long term it is irreversible it is a long term effect features are that is non flexible the same things capital budgeting process what are the steps to be followed in the capital budgeting once you have to evaluate the proposal you have to do the screening you have to perform the comparatives then you have to fix the property then you have to evaluate and see the feedback how the capital budgeting is going to take shape so these are the various parameters which we have to consider the capex committee or the planning committee set up in the organization from the various department who evaluate the various proposals before the pin fixing before the fix a particular project so capital investment decision either you have to accept or reject the mutually exclusive the two project you have to select the one when the capital rationing with the limited amount of fund which you have you have to reap the maximum benefit because you are going to take the loan from the bank you have to going to issue the shares you are going to issue the preference shares equity shares so with this fund you are going to finance your investment decisions so it is a very critical so with the limited amount of fund you have to reap the maximum benefit from the investment decision so the budgeting taxation benefit how the taxation is going to have an effect on the budgeting that also we have gone through in detail the after tax revenue after tax cost and the depreciation tax seal how is going to affect the net present value of your investment we have understood by way of examples that how a particular tax scenario is going to have an impact on your capital investment decisions then we have understood what is the multinational companies and the capital budgeting exercise so what are the complications are involved when you are going to have a capital investment in a foreign land there are tax issues there are uh, there are tax issues there are foreign currency fluctuations there are the political issues and there are royalty issues management fees lot of factors to be considered in this capital investment decisions particularly multinational companies they face a lot of problems when they going for a decision to have a worldwide presence so you can understand the type of techniques and the type of parameters they must be considering before having a, their multi business across all the locations now let us go through the capital structure and capitalization today we will cover a very part of this capital structure we are not going to cover in detail because this particular topics will need some explanation with the solved example today i will try to cover the subject with all the theories followed by in the next class i am going to take up the all the practicals of the problems how to solve on this particular topic so let us understand what is a capital structure what do we mean by capital structure as we all know capital is a major part of all kind of business activity any business you need a capital either you are from the own source or it from the equity shares or will issue debentures or will issue preference shares so all these are the capital there are a mix of capital are available so this capital constitute the addition of all these sources to form a structure this is not a capital structure you can have a mix of structure suppose you have formed a company you have invested 1 lakh rupees from your own source you have taken 1 lakh from the bank you have issued 5 lakhs equity share you have issued 5 lakhs preference shares so these all combination of all this financing decision 
from all these sources is collectively is known as a capital structure. Capital is a major kind of business activity which are decided by size, nature of the business. Capital may be raised with the help of various sources. As we all know, you need a capital to start the business. So you need to have a source of fund. This source of fund will be either from your own source or from the bank or from equity shares or from preference shares. If the company maintains proper and adequate level of capital, it will earn higher profit. Because the more you have capital invested, the more you are going to earn the profit. If planned properly in an effective manner. They can provide more dividends to its shareholders because once you have procured the fund from, from the shareholders, once you are earning the profit, from that profit you have to give the dividends to the shareholders. Capital structure refers to the kind of securities and the proportionate amount that make up capitalization. The composition, how much 10% equity share, 20% preference share, 40% loan from the bank, 10% preferential. So all this composition, capital structure, composition and the proportionate amount of capitalization. Capitalization is preferential, equity shares, and your debentures, fixed interest bearing securities. So all this constitutes capitalization. And the capital structure is the proportionate, proportionate of all these three in securities. It is a mix of different sources of long-term sources such as equity shares, preference shares, debentures, long-term loans and retained earnings. It is a proportionate. Once you have decided that you are going to have equity shares 10%, preference share 10%, debenture 10%, long-term 20%, retained earnings 30%. So this composition, this is a mix of different sources of capital which you are going to use in your organization. It is known as capital structure. The mix and match of these various Capitalization, these are known as capitalization, equity shares, preference shares, debentures, long term. So the composition and the mixture of all these sources of finance will known as the capital structure. So definition of capital structure, the composition of firms financing consists of equity, preference and debt. Prasanna Chandra is a renowned financial thinker, the financial management expert. So he has written the composition of firms financial consists of equity, preference and debt is known as a capital structure. Similarly, Jat S. Buck is another management thinker. He has written capital structure of a company refers to the composition or makeup of its capitalization and it includes all long-term capital resources that is equity, preference, debenture. R. H. Wessel has wrote the long-term sources of fund employed in a business enterprise it is known as capital. What are those long-term sources? Long-term sources are equity shares, debentures, your long-term debts, all this will come under the long-term sources. Just the composition of these long-term sources into your business is how you are going to decide on the composition, the mix and match of these three long-term sources of finance will known as the capital structure. Now there is another term called financial structure. What is the financial structure? The term financial structure is different from capital structure. Financial structure shows the total pattern of total pattern financing. The financial structure is nothing but your total liability, including, including your current liability. Whereas capital structure does not include current liability. Financing structure means your total current liability, long term liability and all sources of capital. But current but current but capital structure is also is only your equity shares preference shares, debentures, long term loan. It does not and your retained earning. It does not include current liability. So financing structure includes the whole total liability is known as the financial structure. It measures the extent to which the total funds are available to finance the total assets of the business. The total fund available to finance the total assets is your financial structure. Financial structure is a capital structure plus current liability. So we'll understand this concept with the help of example. We'll know what is capitalization. We'll know what is capital structure and what is the financial structure. So difference between the financial structure and capital structure. Financial structure includes both long term and short term sources of fund. That includes all short term loans and current liability will be included in financial structure. Whereas capital structure only long term sources of fund that is preference shares, equity shares, debentures. 
it means the entire liability sides of the balance sheet the total liability sides of the balance sheet will be known as a financial structure whereas only long term liabilities of the companies are known as capital structure finance structure consists of all sources of capital it consists of equity preference and retained earning debentures only long term sources it consists of all sources short term long term everything but in capital it includes only long term sources in financial structure it will not be more important while determining value of the firm but while determining the value of the firm value of the firm means the total cost incurred in issuing the total cost of you are having the shares equity shares the total cost of preference shares you are having in the balance sheet the total long term loans you are having in the balance sheet the total of this will known as the value of the firm so whereas in financial structure significance is not given to the value of the firm here in capital structure significance is given to the value of the firm value of the firm is nothing but the total of preference shares equity shares debentures long term funds appearing in the balance sheet if you total these three long term loans this will be known as a value of the firm example now let us understand this whole concept with example we'll understand with this example the capital structure the what is the financial structure and what is capitalization these are the basic concept we should we should understand before we move to the next slide which will detail will be talking about the capital structure decisions so from the following balance sheet calculate capitalization capital structure and financial structure we have a left hand side we have a balance sheet <clears throat> left hand side we have a balance sheet and on the right hand side we have a, uh, on the liability side we are having in the left hand side and the assets we are having in the right hand side so if you see the equity shares we are having a 50000 worth of equity shares we are having a 5000 rupees worth of preference share capital we have a debentures of 6000 we have a retained earning of 4000 we have a bill payable of 2000 we have a creditors of 3000 so total amount is appearing as a 70000 so from here we should able to know very clearly what is capitalization what is capital structure and what is financial structure as we have discussed financial structure is nothing but total of the liability side will be the financial structure the total amount appearing in the liability side of the balance sheet will be a financial structure it includes both long term it includes both short term it includes all current liabilities it includes creditors bill payable which is all is coming so 70000 will be the <coughs> my financial structure now let us move to capitalization so capitalization is equity shares preference shares and debentures this is capitalization capitalization when it talks about it talks about long term finances excluding retained earning retained earning will form part of the capital structure not capitalization capitalization is the only equity shares preference shares and debentures those funds which we have secured long term finance either through shares or through interest bearing securities like this debentures they will all form part of the capitalization in capital structure we have added retained earning because it is also a source of finance which you are going to use in your investment decision that's why retained earning forms part of this capital structure but it does not form part of the capitalization so very clear let us understand once more financial structure is the total side of the liability it includes long term short term credit liabilities fund creditors bill payable current liabilities whatever is the total is appearing on the liability side will be termed as a financial structure capitalization is only the shares equity shares preference shares and interest bearing securities like debentures and bonds they will come as a capitalization 
capital structure will include capitalization plus retained earning because it is also a source of finance when deciding on the capital structure we also see what amount of retained earning we are having this retained earning will decide on the investment decisions also apart from the equity shares preferences and debentures the retained earning is also key factor in the capital structure hence so this this is a very simple example to understand the concept of uh, capital structure capitalization and financial structure so <clears throat> so this is the financial structure we have just added all the uh, credit that is on the liability sides we have came across all the financial structures so features of appropriate capital structure so what are the features of capital structure flexibility you have the option in the organization you have the option whether you want to go for equity shares you want to go for preference shares you want to go for long term borrowings from the bank or you want to issue the debentures so that the flexibility is there in the capital structure you can decide based on the size and nature of the company you can decide which fund you are going to look out so the consideration of flexibility gives the finance manager the ability to alter the firm's capital structure with minimum cost and delay if warranted by the change environment it should also be possible for the company to provide funds whenever needed to finance its profitable activity so you should be flexible enough your capital structure should be flexible enough to help the finance manager in deciding considering the nature size of the business to considering the market condition considering the uh, the the, uh, the risk factor uh, considering the capital outlay you can decide whether i should go for preference whether i should go for equity or whether i should go for debenture to just to, to go for a recap preference shareholders are the one and debenture shareholders are the one who have the first priority of getting the dividend and the interest from the net revenue of the company once they have been distributed the amount left is rest with the equity shareholders this is a fundamental thing for understanding the preference equity share so the profit the dividend right of the preference shareholders and the interest of the debenture debenture holder on the top priority once we distribute the dividend once we distribute the interest on the debenture to the investors the amount left after distributing this dividend and interest to the preference shareholders and dividend holder we get the amount left for equity shareholders and equity shareholders have the voting rights in the organization they have their say in the management because directors are there who are representative of the shareholders they are the representative of the equity shareholders they have the voting rights so they have the say in the management whereas preference shareholders have a very little influence on the management decisions and the debenture holders that does not have at all the voting voting rights so it gives a flexibility to the finance manager to what composition of capital structure to decide considering all these factors profitability a sound capital structure should permit the maximum use of leverage at a minimum cost so as to provide better profitability and thus maximizing earning per share this is the most important criteria any capital investment decision any capital structure any capital structure framing works upon how effective the earning we are going to have a company can earn a profit and can decide what will be the capital structure the profitability is the key index in the organization to decide if i am having a bumper profit in the organization i can go for equity shares and preference shares why because to maximize the shareholders interest to maximize the shareholder return you have a mix and match of debentures and preference share after distributing them you are having a big amount of profit if the company has made up so that the stakeholder will become happy 
they will have a more earning as a form of dividend if the company is making a more profit you are going for preference share and debentures also and equity shares also so that after paying the preference dividend after paying the interest on debentures because they have the number one priority first to get the return compared to equity shareholder so if the profitability is more you can go for more debentures you can go for preference share and you have left with a more amount after distributing the interest and the dividend to the debenture holder and the preference share holder then the remaining profit you can give it to the equity share holder in the form of dividend to in order to increase the stakeholders value in order to increase the image of the organization in order to increase the dividend for the shareholders so all these factors to be considered so profitability is a key factor in deciding the capital structure but if you are not having the profit what will be the situation if you are not having the profit you will go more for equity shareholder because you don't have to pay to debentures and to the preference shareholders you will prefer to go for equity shareholders because equity shareholders there is no liability on the part of the company to compulsory to pay to the dividend to the equity shareholders no they cannot pay if the company does not want to pay dividend they cannot they cannot pay to the equity shareholders but if you have issued the debenture if you have issued the preference share you have to pay mandated by the statute to pay interest and debenture to interest and dividend to the debenture holder and the preference shareholders but if you have not if you have incurred the loss in the organization you can issue equity shareholders because management can decide not to pay dividend that is okay there is no problem but if if you have paid if you are incurring a loss and if you have issued preference share then it the whole capital structure will go haywire because you are incurring loss and you have issued the preference share and the dividend share which from where you are going to fund those dividends and the debenture interest to the uh, investor so in in the loss making scenario company prefers to issue equity share in a profit making scenario they prefer to issue the capital structure they they frame the capital structure to in order to get fund from the preference share and the dividend share so profitability is the key factor solvency extensive debt threatens the solvency if you have taken too much of debt you have issued too much of debentures if you have issued too much which is beyond the earning capacity of the company the company may become insolvent from where you are going to fund those interest and the debentures to the investors so this is a very very critical factor the solvency factor is very critical while designing the capital structure of the firm conservatism no company should exceed its debt capacity once the earning is there yes then you can go for debentures and preference share if earning is not there it is always advisable to go for equity share because the company is under no obligation to pay dividend to the equity shareholders as already explained that the interest is to be paid on debt and principal sum is also to be paid these payment depend upon the future cash flow if there is no future cash flow there is no point in deciding the preference and debentures in your capital structure it is prefers to have equity this is a fundamental rule one has to be kept in mind we are going to discuss in detail the determinants of capital structure in detail it will come very clearly in what scenario what investment we are going to do these payment depend upon the future cash if future cash flows are not sufficient then the cash insolvency can lead to legal insolvency you may go into a insolvent where the all the legal complications will come in and it will go into the case of insolvent control the capital structure should not lead to loss of loss of control in the company what is what is the control control is when you issue lot of equity shares in the market the shareholders have the voting power in the organization the directors are invited the directors in the organization have are the representative of the shareholders so they have the voting rights so they take some decisions what they do generally 
they in order to have their influence in the management they prefer to have more of preference shares and debentures in the organization and less of equity share because of having a strong presence in the management in terms of decision making the moment they go for more equity shares they are more representative of the shareholders so they may not exercise a full control on the management because of lot of shareholders voting powers are involved hence the company may lose the control so these factor need to be considered so these are the features of the appropriate capital structure so in order to have a full control on capital structure the how is going to be decided which component of investment to be made is a very critical factor whether preference share sources of fund whether equity share sources of fund whether long term borrowing whether fixed interest bearing securities like debentures you are going to have so <clears throat> so what are the determinants of capital structure what are the determinants of capital structure capital structure refer to the firm a firm chooses to finance its assets and investment through some combination of equity debts and internal funds why we are going for this share why we are going for debentures because we want to fund our assets we want to go for financing activities we want to procure the assets that's why we need fund that's why we are going to the bank for procuring the fund that's why we are issuing the shares we are issuing the equity shares we are issuing the preference shares so that we will get the fund and we are going to finance these investments into our fixed assets so it is the best interest of the company to find optimal ratio of debt to equity to reduce the risk of insolvency so what will be debt equity ratio the combination whether we should go for a debt fund debt fund or debenture interest bearing securities and preference capital and the equity share so total of debt total of equity debt to equity ratio how much debt funds we should have and how much equity share we should have we have to balance it out so this ratio we need to consider optimal ratio of debt to equity it depends on lot of factor which we are going to discuss what are the factors which we are going to influence this ratio what what are the determinants of the capital structure continues to be successful yes we want to be successful in the organization so our composition of capital structure should be such which will overall it will increase the value of the firm and which will reduce the cost of capital this is best a fundamental aspect of capital invest structure the whole capital capital structure should be framed in such a way it will increase the value of the firm and at the same time it will reduce the cost of capital cost of capital we talk about the interest which you are going to pay to finance the debentures for which we have issued the dividend which i am going to pay to equity shareholders and the preference so all these earnings which going to be distributed is a cost to the organization that's why it is in the cost of capital so the whole object of having a capital structure is to increase the value of the firm at the same time to reduce the cost of capital ultimately remain or to become profitable so determinants of capital structure so this is one of the most critical topics in the capital structure who are the determinants so which one which decides what factors determines a very sound capital structure in the organization financial leverage the another name what we call it trading in equity another name for financial leverage is trading in equity what is that the use of long term fixed bearing debt and preference share capital along with equity share is called financial leverage financial leverage is how much is the debt and how much is the equity for example just to understand in a simple way a company has made a super profit a substantial amount of profit the company has made what happens 
when the company has made a profit the company prefers to use to issue preference shares and debentures so that so that a maximum amount is available with the equity shareholders the return they will get more for example for example a company has made a profit of 1 lakh rupees on that 1 lakh rupees the company on a, on investment of 10 lakh rupees the company has earned a revenue of 10% the company has earned a revenue of 10% suppose a company does not issue preference share a company does not issue debentures the company only issues equity shares what will happen the shareholders will get only 10% of its revenue because the company itself has run on only 10% so the 10% earned revenue will be only distributed to the equity shareholders now suppose another company earned 1 lakh revenue same example but the company has issued the company has issued suppose 4 lakh rupees or suppose 5 lakh rupees the company has issued 5 lakh rupees equity shares and the dividend shares so on the investment of 10 lakh rupees the company has issued 5 lakhs on 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 debentures and preference shares the remaining is the uh, the, the the remaining is the profit which the company wants to distribute to the equity shareholders so the return the return on the revenue the the company has earned a revenue of 1 lakh rupees the company has paid 50000 rupees by way of dividend and debentures the remaining is the 50000 on that 50000 the earning is 20% now so on that 20% the equity shareholder will enjoy the 20% rather than the first example which i have explained to you the company was having 1 lakh rupee income and which the the company has invested 10 lakhs the company has earned 10% revenue that is 1 lakh so 1 lakh is only distributed to that is the percentage the rate of return is 10% so only the 10% will be distributed to the equity shareholders whereas second scenario the company revenue earned 1 lakh rupees the company distributed 50000 by way of interest and the debentures and the dividend the remaining 50000 divided by amount investment was 10 lakhs the company is investing 20% so the equity shareholders are benefited when when the company is making a profit when the company is making a profit the equity shareholders are benefited after the distribution of dividend and debentures to the debenture holders and the preference shareholders so the company trades in the equity when the company is having a lot of profit they work out in such a way to maximize the shareholder value to the equity shareholders that is why it is called trading in equity so this financial leverage plays a very important role in the capital structure second the growth and stability of the sale if the sale is more then the revenue will more if the revenue is more the profit will be more if the profit is more the company will have more debt uh, uh, the more more debt uh, capital and equity share capital so if the sales of a are expected to remain fairly stable it can raise a high level of debt because sufficient income is available with the company to finance we can pay sufficient dividend to the preference shareholders if the income is more we can have we can borrow loan from the bank we can issue the debentures we can pay the interest to the debenture holders because the company sales and the revenue are stable cost of capital the capital structure should provide for the minimum cost of capital measuring the cost of various sources of fund is a complex subject needs a special treatment what cost we are going to incur when we are going to issue the debenture what cost we are going to incur when we are going to issue preference share what cost we are going to incur when we are going to issue equity share so all these cost is what 
the earning of the organization which you are going to distribute to these various investors and the shareholders this is the cost for the organization because these revenues are getting distributed in the form of dividend so this cost of capital need to be considered for each sources of finance in order to dis- decide a very optimum capital structure risk there are two type of risk by planning the capital structure business risk and the financial risk whether the business is going to sustain over a long period of time that is one of the most important factor we need to consider if the business is an under going to be a loss you cannot have more of debentures and preferential capital it is better to have more of equity share capital because there there you are not obligated to pay dividend to the equity shareholders but in the loss making scenario if you have borrowed fund from the debenture from the from the preference share capital you are going to from where you are going to source because you are not earning revenue so it is going to sub optimize you are bringing a loss to the organization by having a risk you are going to have a big doing a big risk in such scenario cash flow again the same thing if the cash flow is enough in the organization they can you can go for more of debt instrument if the cash flow is less you can go for equity instrument one of the feature of sound capital structure is conservation conservation does not mean employing no debt or a small amount of debt conservation is related to the assessment of the liability of fixed charges created by the use of debt or preference capital in the capital structure in the context of firm's ability to generate cash to meet these fixed charges we should have that ability to generate cash to pay to dividend to preference shareholder and dividend dividend uh, dividend shareholder that's why the concept of conservative is can you should have a sufficient amount of cash so that you the principles of conservatism you should follow that means you should have that ability to pay the cash to the dividend shareholder and preference shareholder hence the firm's ability to generate cash to meet this fixed charges because you are committed in dividend shareholders in dividend type in dividend instruments in preference share capital you are committed to pay the interest and the dividend you cannot escape hence this principle of conservatism should come you should able to analyze your cash flow in such a way so that you should be able to pay this fixed charges to the dividend shareholder and preference shareholder nature and size of the firm if the company if the companies are very big if the organizations are very big they can go for a massive issue of shares we can see in the by big big holding the companies is coming out with ipo initial public offer they are issuing the share they going for the public in the big organizations in the big organizations they go for the ipo they go for the issue of shares so they prefer to go for preference share they will say but a small firm they will only end up taking loans from the bank that is a debt instrument they cannot go for equity shares and a preference share because of the size of the business so the bigger the size of the business the bigger will be the component and mix and match of the capital structure control whenever additional funds are required by the firm the management of the firm wants to raise the fund without any loss of control over the firm if the company is having a huge profit the company will try to take the to optimize the capital capital structure by way of debt instrument because they will not issue equity share why they will divulge the ownership of the company to hundreds and thousands of shareholders because they have the voting right so in order to take a full control of the organization the directors they prefer to issue preference shares and the debenture flexibility flexibility means firm's ability to adapt its capital structure to the needs of changing conditions the capital structure of the firm is the flexible it has no difficulty in changing its capitalization or sources of funds whenever need of the company should able to raise the fund without undue delay and cost to finance profitable investment requirement of investment it is necessary to meet the requirement of investment both institutional as private when the debt financing is used sometimes the shareholders they prefer they during the annual general meeting they tell the directors you go for the investment because they want to reap the more profit they want to get the more dividend so if the companies are making good profit they prefer that you also invest heavily through equity shares so that the investor should get the benefit of 
dividend. So there is always the meetings are organized between the uh, directors, the board meeting, the annual general meeting. They decide on the various investment options and they take a decision on behalf of the shareholders in order to increase the stakeholder value, in order to bring more dividend to the stakeholders. <clears throat> capital market condition. Capital market condition do remain the same forever. Sometimes do no remain, do not remain the same forever. Sometimes they may be depression, while at a certain time they will boom in the market, in the depressed market. And there are pessimistic business conditions. Sometimes the market condition also decides your capital structure. If the market condition is down, it is not moving, it is not performing, it is not growing, the market condition, then it is always preferable to go for equity share. Because you don't know the stability, how long the business is going to sustain in such a market. Because the market is not favoring the business. So you are not obligated to pay dividend to the equity shareholder. So in such scenario, the company will prefer to issue equity shareholder. But when the market is booming, your business is growing, your profitability you are making, the company will go for a long-term debt, like debentures and preferences, where there is no problem. You have sufficient profit, you are going to find, you are going to pay dividend and debenture interest to the shareholder. Marketability. Marketability here means ability of the company to sell or market particular type of security in a particular period of time, which in turn depends upon the readiness of the investors to buy the security. The market conditions should be there. Yet the com their company should be able to market that particular security. The equity share should be, people should be approaching to you. If you are offering and the people are not accepting the share, people are not investing, there is no point. So the marketability, your security, your capital structure should be set. If you are issuing the share, if you are issuing the debenture, if you are issuing the preference share, the investors should apply and you should be able to receive the fund. Inflation. Inflation is a major driving force behind interest rate. The financing decision should be cognizant of inflationary trend. Because what will the cost of financing? The bank may going to charge after six months what rate of interest? The debenture interest, how much I'm going to pay to the interest because of this inflation factor. All these inflation factors we need to consider because once you have issued debenture and preference share, you have to pay dividend. So the inflation is increasing, then you have to, accordingly, you have to increase the level of the earning for these investors. So the inflection factors also need to be considered. Flotation costs. Flotation costs are incurred when the funds are raised. You have to pay to the underwriters. You have to pay to the financial bankers, the commissions, there's so much of cost involved. So before taking any capital investment, this capital structure, arriving at a capital structure, this flotation cost also needs to be considered. How much cost you have to incur? Because you have to incur printing cost for issuing the debentures in the hard form, in the demat form. You have to liaise with financial banker. They will be charging fees. You have to involve underwriters. All this cost is going to involve. So in designing the capital structure, you have to work out how much is the flotation cost for each type of sourcing, capital cost, uh, how much how much cost, flotation cost you are going to incur in while issuing equity share, how much flotation cost you have to incur in issuing the preference share, how much flotation cost in dividend and the debenture. So legal considerations should be taken over regularity and regulatory. Sometimes the legal also, the local country legal framework also, what rules and regulation have to be followed in deciding on the capital structure of the organization. So capitalization, what is the capitalization? We'll go to the another concept called capitalization. Capitalization refers to the process of determining the quantum of fund that a firm needs to run its business. It is different from capital structure. Capital structure means a mix of the capitalization. A mix of capitalization is the capital structure. And capitalization, capitalization means the sources of fund. Either you are going to show equity share, or you are going to show the debenture, or you are going to show the preference share. It is a process of determining the quantum of fund that runs to need the business. Capitalize is only the par value of share capital and debenture. And it does not include reserves and surplus that we already discussed. Capital is discussed into overcapitalization, undercapitalization, water capitalization. Overcapitalization means more capital than actually required. You have to work out how much capital you need 
to source the funding of the assets. So for the procurement of asset, you need the capital. So how much capital we are going to need? Sometimes you end up in having more capital than the assets you are going to acquire. That's why it is known as overcapitalization. Sometimes it ends up with under undercapitalization. You have you are going to procure one lakh one crore worth of assets, but you have received the money only to the extent of eighty lakhs from the market. So this results in undercapitalization. There is a concept called water capitalization. Its realizable value of assets from the company is less than its book value. The assets which you are going to procure from these sources. It has not. It has. It has. It has a net 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 realizable value is very less than the book value. So this is the water capitalization. So what is the optimum capital structure? Optimum capital structure. The capital structure at which the weighted average cost of the is minimum, thereby the value of the firm is maximum. The weighted average cost of the equity shares, the preference shares, the debentures, the cost which you are going to incur. the cost of capital of these three instrument or this is three equities it should be the minimum and the value of the firm the amount of fund which you are going from which you are going to get from the public by investing it is the value of the firm you have issued 1 1 crore of equity share 2 crore of preference share 3 crore of debenture the value of the firm is 6 crore the the whole objective of the capital structure is to maximize the value of the firm 1 crore you have issued in equity share 2 crore in preference share 3 crore in debentures so total 6 crore the whole objective is to increase the value of the firm but at the same time reducing the cost of capital you have to pay dividend to the preference share holder you have to pay interest to the debentures holder you have to pay dividend to the equity share holder so from the earning of the organization so it is a cost of the capital you have to pay this dividend you have to pay this interest to this uh, to the investors from this earning from the revenue hence it is the cost of capital so the whole object of capital uh, structure is to increase the value of the firm and to reduce the cost of capital optimum capital structure may be defined as a capital structure or combination of debt and equity that will lead to maximum value of the firm how to optimize issue more equity shares less of debentures or more of debentures late of equity shares is depend upon how you are going to optimize it as i told you if the company is incurring more profit more profit means more of debentures and preference shares and less of equity if the company is incurring loss more of equity shares because you are not obligated to pay dividend to the equity shareholders but at the same time in during loss condition if you are having more of debentures and preference shares you are end up in having because it is a fixed charge you have to pay to them so it will create an imbalance in your capital structure so the whole capital structure may be defined as a capital structure combination of debt and equity debt means preference and debentures and equity means equity share capital that will lead to the maximum value of the firm this year of capital structure aim of the two important objective maximize the value of the firm and minimize the overall cost of capital so these are the two most important objective so forms of capital structure the various uh, combinations are there mix and match is there for capital structure capital structure pattern varies from company to company and the availability of finance normally the forms of capital structure are popular in practice they are equity shares only equity and preference shares equity and debentures equity preference and debentures so either they in the capital structure there will be only equity shares or it can be equity and preference or it can be equity and debentures or it will be all the three equity debentures and preference so the last slide which i am going to touch up next time on detail part on capital structure theories and the approach this is a very complex topic in the capital structure it talks about what are the approaches and what are the theories in the capital structure capital structure is a major part of the firm's financial decision which affects the value of the firm and it leads to change in ebit that is earning before uh, earning before in, uh, interest and taxes and market value of the shares there is a relationship upon capital structure cost of capital and value of the firm this we are going to discuss in the approaches which we are going to dis discuss in the next uh, discussion on capital structure these approaches which will bring the relationship 
between the cost of capital, capital structure and the value of the firm. We will discuss with practical example how to optimize the capital, the capital structure with so that the whole objective was capital structure was to enhance the value of the firm and to enhance the and to reduce the cost of capital. So this example will bring the discussion among these three interrelationships. The aim of effective capital structure is to maximize the value of the firm and to reduce the cost of capital. This is already discussed. So there are two major approach to the capital structure. One is the traditional approach and one is the modern approach. So these two approaches we are going to discuss in our next session. So under, under uh, uh, traditional approach, we are having only one approach that is traditional. Under modern approach, we are having two, two approaches. One is the net income approach, net operating income approach and Modigliani Miller approach. These are the techniques of deciding the capital structure. This is the techniques which we will be discussing on what will be the composition of your capital structure considering the mix of equity, debt, debentures, long term fund. So these approach we are going to work on and will decide on how to maximize the value of the firm, how to reduce the cost of capital. So just to do a, just to do a two minutes recap what we have studied today. We have understood the meaning of capital structure. Capital structure means what will be the composition, the mix of the various capital sources, either equity, preference or dividends. Then we have understood what is the difference between the, what, what is the concept of capital structure. It is the firm's composition of financing consists of equity, preference and debt. Capital structure of company refers to composition or makeup of capitalization include all for long term capital resources. Then we have understood what is the financial structure. Financial structure is nothing but total of the liabilities which will include long term, short term and current liabilities. Then we understood what difference between financial and capital structure. Financial structure talks about the total of liabilities. Capital structure talks about the long term liabilities of the company. So in deciding the value of the firm, capital structure play a key role whereas financial structure does not play, play a key role in deciding the value of the firm. Why? Because capital structure deals with the long term liabilities. Example, then we have understood what is capitalization. The capitalization, when we talk about, it includes equity shares, dividends, a preference shares, debentures. Capital structure includes retained earning also because it is also one of the sources of finance in deciding the capital structure. Of course, it plays a very little role in deciding the capital structure, but retained earning form part of the capital structure and finance structure as we have discussed is total of liabilities of the business firm. Then we have understood with by this example, then the features of appropriate capital structure, the flexibility, the financial manager should be flexible enough to opt for various sources considering the value of the firm and the cost of capital, profitability, solvency, conservatism, control. Then the determinants of capital structure, this is the most important uh, discussion which we had. The determinants of financial leverage, which comes, which, which mix and match the financial manager is going to decide based on profitability of the concern, based on the growth and stability of the sales, what is going to be the cost of capital, what, what are the risks associated with various sources of this finance. Then the cash flow position, if the company is having a more cash flow, then the company can go for debt instrument. If the company is having a less cash flow, they can go for the equity shares because the fundamental rule is in equity shares, the company is not obligated to pay dividend to the equity shareholders. Whereas in preference shares and the debentures, the company is obligated to pay first to the debenture, second to the preference shareholders, whether the company is earning profit or not, they have to pay because the company is obligated by the statute of act. They have to pay, but in equity shareholders, they are not obligated. Hence, when the company is making a huge amount of profit, the company should go for more of debentures and uh, uh, preferential and less of equity shares. There is similarly nature and size of the firm. If the company is big enough, the company go for equity and, uh, equity and uh, dividend shares. 
if the company is small they can go for the short term